Barry Sullivan in The Unexpected. It almost broke my heart to have to get rid of that thousand dollars. It is not easy to make money. Not these days, when everybody's on the lookout for counterfeiters. And plates and ink have gone up, just like other things. But I didn't have no choice. I'd bumped into the unexpected. The unexpected. A secret future. A hidden destiny waiting for you. Where? When? Who knows? Tomorrow? Today? An hour from now? Perhaps in just a moment, you too will meet... The Unexpected. Before our story, a word from your announcer. And now, the brilliant stage and screen star, Barry Sullivan in Counterfeit, a drama of the unexpected. I was sitting in the club car in a Chicago Comet, and we were somewhere in Utah when it begun my problem. This guy was a hungry-looking fellow in the next chair who gives me a look that says he wants to make conversation. Personally, I do not like to talk to strangers on trains. You can never be sure the kind of people you'll meet. And moreover, I was not feeling too well, having slept in an upper the night before, which is not the way I like to travel. But trains being crowded, I was lucky to have a berth at all. At least that is what the ticket agent in Frisco said. And I did not want to argue, since I was wondering at the time, if the ink on the $20 bills I had just handed him was dry. I was leaving in kind of a hurry, and sometimes a rush job will smear on you. But the agent did not notice if it did, which I doubt, since I usually do a superior piece of workmanship. So we gave me my ticket, and here I was, very happy on my way east, when this hungry-looking fellow I mentioned earlier opens his mouth. My, my, it's a lovely day, isn't it? Feels almost like spring. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Howard Smith. I work for the railroad. What's your line? Why, uh, art. Art? Oh, an artist. That's something different. <laughs> uh, do you use models? Oh, sure. Oh, and uh, are they, uh, well... <laughs> Do they... <laughs> well, no, no, no. The models I use ain't living. What? The last thing I done was a picture of Andrew Jackson. Oh, I see. I'm an engraver. Well, what a coincidence. Think of that, an engraver. Why, you can be a big help to me, Mr... Uh, uh... Van Dyke. Spike Van Dyke. Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Van Dyke. Uh, say, do you know who's on this train? No. A counterfeiter. Yeah. Yes, indeed, a counterfeiter. Well, what do you know? Is it Shorty Thomas? Oh, I don't know the gentleman's name. No, no, no. Couldn't be Shorty anyway. Why not? He's still in the pen. Oh. Fingers Flanagan ought to be out by now, though. But he wouldn't be headed for Chicago. That's where his wife lives. Say, what does this guy look like? Oh, I haven't seen him. I mean, if I have, I, I didn't recognize him. Yeah, it must be Inky McCoy. If funny he ain't been around to pay me his respects. I wonder if Inky's getting hi-hat since he started doing $50 bills. You seem to be acquainted with a number of, uh, uh, well, rather dubious characters. I get around. And I'm sure you can be of help to me. Great yeah. help. You see, as I told you, I work for the railroad, and the conductor got a wire that someone paid for a ticket on this run and used counterfeit $20 bills. Uh, $20 bills? Yes. Did, uh, did this character buy his ticket in San Francisco? Precisely. How did you know? Oh, intuition. <laughs> well, the poor agent had a terrible time. Ink all over his hands and face, and it won't wash off. He should use chloroform. Chloroform? Yeah, it's very good for removing stains. Oh, I see. Well, at any rate, we know that the counterfeiter must be on this train, but we don't know which passenger to arrest. But that's where you come in. Yeah? If you can identify the culprit, then we won't have to wait until we get to Salt Lake City. Uh, what happens in Salt Lake City? Well, that's where the treasury men, uh, or is it the... Uh, FBI men, which one would it be? Treasury. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, that's what the conductor said, but uh, he called them something else. Uh, B men? T men. Uh, thank you. T men. My, you do have an extraordinary fund of information. Yeah. <laughs> well, the uh, T men are waiting in Salt Lake City. That's our next stop. And they'll go through the train. Every car. I expect they're quite thorough. Yeah, quite. And they'll search everyone who looks suspicious. And I suppose the guilty person will still have some of the counterfeit money on him, so. <laughs> It'll be, uh, uh draperies. <laughs> curtains. Uh, yes, curtains for him. But... But what? If we could find the wrongdoer first... Yeah? Then we'd be heroes, and there might be a reward. And, well, since I work for the train, they might speed up my next promotion. <laughs> well, what do you say? We had come into a very dark tunnel, so I did not feel obliged to answer Mr. Smith. 
Fortunately, they had not turned on the lights and I was sitting next to a window. So I did some quick thinking and decided that I should get rid of my billfold, which contained exactly 50 counterfeit $20 bills. The window was closed and it was very hard to open, as are most windows on trains. But with a good deal of exertion, I managed to push it up. Then I threw my simulated leather wallet out of the train. It bounced back into my lap. The train was air-conditioned and therefore contained a double win window. I decided to open the second one, but they don't open. I tugged and I pushed and nothing happened. And then just as I was about to give up, it slid down from the top and cracked my hand. Oh, oh Mr. Van Dyke, what's the matter? Are you injured? No, 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 I'm all right. I just bumped into something. Oh. I grabbed the bill billfold with my, my bruised hand, held it back over my shoulder and started to toss it out when the train comes out of the tunnel. Mr. Van Dyke, Mr. Van Dyke, good heavens, do you know what you're doing? Huh? Why, if I hadn't grabbed your arm, you'd have thrown your wallet right out of the train. Oh, yeah. What on earth made you try to do a thing like that? It, it, it was so dark, I thought it was a pack of cigarettes. Oh, of course. But why were you throwing your cigarettes away? I decided to give up smoking. In the middle of a tunnel? Yeah, that's where I learned to smoke. And now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Smith, I'm going to wash up. Well, hurry back. We're due in Salt Lake at 3.30. I looked at my watch and it said 2 o'clock, which gave me plenty of time to get rid of my money. And the gentleman's lounge seemed as good a place as any for such an endeavor. I pushed through the green curtains, but the door was locked. Porter. Yes, sir. Oh, Porter. Hey, hey, open up, will you please? Uh, sorry, sir, I can't. Yeah, why not? Always close when we pull into a station. Will we undo at a station now? Yes, we are, sir. Salt Lake City. Salt Lake, but yes, that sir. isn't until 3.30. Yes, sir, that's right. It's after 3 now. My watch only says 2. <laughs> well, you must have forgot to change it, sir. We come into mountain time. What? Yes, sir. It's an hour later here and in California. Oh, yeah, I get you. Okay, thanks. Lots of folks make the same mistake. I opened the Pullman door, walked out onto the vestibule, kissed the roll of 20s goodbye, and was all ready to let loose when... Oh, Mr. Van Dyke, here you are. I've been looking all over for you. Don't tell me you forgot about our little plan to apprehend the counterfeit. I know, but I... I... Come along, Mr. Van Dyke. It's our duty to take the initiative. We wandered through the train, all 11 cars and the diner, but we didn't find no counterfeiter. I kept trying to shake Mr. Smith so I could get rid of the dough, but he wouldn't be shook. Oh, I'm staying right with you, Mr. Van Dyke. <laughs> you never can tell. We might see our man yet, just by accident. Yeah. We ended up back in a club car, and I still had my 20s. They was burning a hole in my pocket, but what could I do? Well, hello. That was what I could do. I ain't never seen a woman yet who don't know how to get rid of a guy's money. And she didn't look like any exception. Uh, would you like to play some cards? Oh, dear me, no. Uh, why, I never gamble. How about you? Why, uh, sure, but... Uh... Gin Rummy, just the two of us. You set the stakes. You mean you want to play for money? Sure. Okay, ten bucks. You mean uh, a point? Sure. Bob, you can lose a thousand dollars in one game. I can? Of course. Well, then we'd only have to play one game. All right. I'll deal. Since I had never played Gin Rummy, it seemed unlikely that I would have any trouble in losing my money. However... My first hand contained three queens, three kings, three aces, and the deuce of spades. She turned up a card in front of me. It was an ace. Do you want it? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, uh, take it. Huh? Take the ace. Okay. Now, lay down. What? Lay down. <laughs> He's got gin. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I got gin. <laughs> she wrote some figures down, and from the way she looked at me, I was pretty sure that I was winning. This did not please me. The next hand did not have any pairs or threes of a kind, so I felt very much better. I had picked up the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, and king of clubs. Turn up a card. Okay. I turned up a card. It was the queen of clubs. Take it. Again? Take it, and you'll have gin. Uh, just a minute. It's my turn first. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot. She picked up the queen, lay down her hand, and said... Gin. Now I was beginning to see how the game was played. It was very interesting. Well, that's game. You owe me a hundred and one points. That's one thousand and ten dollars. Shall we play some more? Uh, no, I do not think so. Hmm? Don't you want a chance to uh, win your money back? Oh, no, 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 no. I I'm very glad to pay up. <laughs> I took out my billfold, gave her my fifty twenties, and the good ten which I did not like to part with, since I was counting on it for dinner money. But I would not like anyone to say I am a poor loser, especially under the circumstances <laughs> you might say I had won. At any rate, I was rid of my counterfeit money, and I lo no longer had any reason to fear being searched. As a matter of fact, I was, in a manner of speaking, very, very pleased with myself. 
You think the story is over, don't you? But wait. Wait for... The Unexpected. And now, Barry Sullivan in the surprising conclusion of Counterfeit, a drama of the unexpected. We was pulling into the Salt Lake Station, and I was feeling extremely confident of my ability to pass the careful scrutiny of the Treasury agent when Dr. Smith comes running up to me. Oh, oh Mr. Van Dyke, Mr. Van Dyke, there you are, there you are. I was afraid you might be getting off. I have news for you. Great news. Yeah? Yes. That girl you were playing cards with, she cheated you. I checked the score, and she hadn't won at all. Well, she probably needs the money. Oh, nonsense. She's a professional gambler. I forced her to invent it. They call her Jenny the Gin. Makes her living at cards. My, the trained people would be pleased that I discovered her. That's my job, you know. It is? Oh, yes. Didn't I tell you? I'm a railroad detective. <laughs> well, here's your money. I got it all back except the $10 bill. She'd spent that. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> now, excuse me. The treasury men are coming into this car, and I simply have to wash my hands before I meet them. They're all green from, from something or other. I, I can't imagine what. Counterfeit starred Barry Sullivan. Included in the cast were Ginny Johnson and Herbert Lytton. Our story was written by Robert Libbett and Frank Burt and directed by Mel Williamson. This is Hal Sawyer inviting you to listen again soon when another of your favorite motion picture stars meets... The Unexpected. The Unexpected is a Hamilton Whitney production, transcribed in Hollywood.